So you probably have been seeing in the headlines that interest rates are at an all time low, that it's a booming housing market. Houses can barely stay on market for a couple of days without multiple offers. There's a lot of action as it pertains to the real estate industry. So you may have thought to yourself, I could probably be one of those people that could sell some of these homes and get in on some of that action. And you may be right. So what I want to do today is give you the definitive action plan on how to pass your real estate exam without all the headaches, without all the frustration, right to the point. What is the most effective way to pass your real estate exam? And also as a bonus at the end of the video, I'm going to give you the two, the two tips that I think most agents need to be mindful of because they are potentially career killers. I'm going to give you that at the end. So without further ado, how to pass the real estate exam on your first go round. Let's go. So before I jump over to the whiteboard, let's discuss the basics. What is a real estate sales person? What do they do? How do they get paid? Well, first and foremost, in order for you to represent a buyer or a seller in the real estate industry, you have to become a licensed salesperson. You have to take a test, you have to get approved, and you have to hang your license with a broker. And for most people, you're not getting paid on salary. You're only getting paid anytime you sell a home. So what that means is you only get to eat what you kill. So this can be a very cutthroat and competitive industry, but if you do the right steps, you want to give yourself a great chance to succeed. Now the average price of a home in the United States is about 270,000. So let's say you are a buyer's agent and you're getting paid 3% on the sale of the average home in the U S which right now is about 270,000. 3% of 270,000 is over eight grand. So you can sell one average home in the US and make about $8,000. Now, depending on which broker you're affiliated with, they may take a good portion of that, or you may only have to pay a flat fee, maybe $300, $500, and you get to pocket the rest. So again, selling one home and making close to eight grand, you can easily see why it's a very competitive market and why a lot of people are attracted to becoming licensed agents. In the real estate industry now if all of this sounds good to you let's go over to the whiteboard and i'm going to show you exactly what it takes to get your license and be a successful real estate salesperson once you made the decision that you want to become a licensed salesperson there are some things that you got to do and i have a general outline of the things that you need to be prepared for get your mind right and this is the sequence of the best way to attack this so the first thing you're going to have to do depending on your state because the hours may vary depending on what state that you live in so for example in the state of georgia you're going to need to take 75 hours of a pre-licensed salesperson course in the state of texas i believe it's over 100 hours uh, in the state of florida i think it's like 63 or 65 i'm not sure so the first thing you're going to have to be aware of is depending on your state you're going to have to register for a pre-licensed course now for this example I'm going to stick with Georgia so I can keep the hours consistent now how can you take this course where can you take it what's the price how does it all work you have a couple of options and you got to figure out which one is best for you the first thing you can do is you can call locally so what you can do is you can put in your state and pre-license into Google and you're going to see a whole bunch of local real estate schools a lot of times they may be built inside of an already existing real estate brokerage firm you can actually take it in person with a book in hand, with a professor sitting in front of you, with people sitting next to you. That's one option to do. The second option is you can take it online. You can take your pre-licensed course online. One of the places that I highly recommend if you decide to do it online and not in person is to go to a website called Real Estate Express. And what I'll do is I'll link that below so you can get direct access. And as always, depending on the state and depending on the option of which you buy, it can usually range from around $200 to around $350, $400. That's usually around the price point of where you can get your education. Now, which one would I recommend for you? Now, this is where I gotta get very, very honest with you. You have the in-person option and then you have the online option. You need to ask yourself, which option is best for you and your personality? Because I will say this, I've seen several people in real life that known that we had a broker's firm, that knew I was in real estate for over 10 years, and I told them, hey, go ahead and go to this website, get registered, 
and they kept giving me excuse after excuse. Anytime I saw them, I would say, hey, did you go ahead and did you complete your course online? And they would always come back and say things like, oh man, it's crazy, I had a crazy work week. This weekend, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go 10 hours straight, I'm gonna knock it out. And then I'll see them in a few weeks and I'll say, hey, what happened to the online class that you took? And again, they would give me the same excuse. So I will say this, if you're somebody that has trouble being self-motivated, if you need somebody to hold your hand, I would probably say, don't take your class online, go in person. Because when you take your class online, no one's going to knock on your door. No one's going to call you and remind you, hey, you signed up for your real estate class. Make sure you go ahead and do it. No one's going to do that for you. Hold yourself accountable and make it to completion. Don't wait for anyone to hold your hand in order for you to make it to your goal. All right, so that is step number one. Complete your pre-licensed class. And I personally recommend Real Estate Express. Once you've completed your 75 hours of pre-licensed course, you're going to have to prepare to take your state exam because you're gonna to have to take a state exam past that in order to get your real estate license. So how can you prepare for your real estate state exam? A lot of people get intimidated by this. You don't have to be intimidated. What are the best ways to prepare yourself? Back in the day when I originally got my real estate license, this was well over 15 years ago, there was a little book called the AMP book. And I don't even know if they're still around to be honest. But this was a book where it was like white and blue and in the back of the book they had a cd-rom and that just shows you how old this is there was a cd-rom that you would put in your computer and it would give you practice exams where you can kind of prepare in order to take your state exam this is what i use way back in the day if you still see these guys you may want to check them out a better option for you is a site called prep agent they have a youtube channel and they have a website this guy is awesome. Go ahead and follow him. You can follow him for free on YouTube. This guy, Prep Agent, probably has some of the best material if you're trying to prepare for your state exam. So what I would do is I would take the pre-licensed class with Real Estate Express, and then I would go ahead and take Prep Agent. Again, Prep Agent, you can find a lot of his material for free on YouTube. I highly recommend that you go ahead and follow him anyway. It's free but I know he does have paid options as well. I use his paid option when I prepared to take my broker's license a couple years back. Prep agent, I highly recommend. Another option that I will recommend that you do is look into taking a CRAM course. How can you take this? Type in your state real estate CRAM course. There are places where you can take in-person classes and th this one isn't too long, it's only two days. You can take a Saturday and Sunday CRAM course and they're not going to be going over everything in detail like the 75 hour class. They're not going to do that. The cram course is two days where you're going to be among other people. You're going to have a professor in front of you. And all you guys are doing is preparing to take the state exam. What I have found is in those classes, they go over questions that are very similar to the questions that you will see on the actual exam. So I highly would recommend look into taking a cram course. If you don't want to take any classes in person for your 75 hours, that's okay. But still, think about taking a cram course because it's only two days. Two days you're going to be required to be in person. But trust me, the amount of notes, the amount of handouts, and the amount of questions that you can ask a professor, you're going to get so much to prepare for the exam. Now, once you're at this stage, most people tend to have a good grasp of the content. They understand the information. But what I found is most people run into certain areas and certain topics where they just always get stumped at. So for example, there are questions like, how are you able to own a home, joint tenancy, tenancy in common? Uh, what are riparian rights? What I recommend is the areas where you find yourself weak at, take a physical flashcard, not online, don't write it in a notepad. Take the physical flashcards and write down the definitions of all the terms that you have trouble with and just go over every day, take about an hour every single day with your note cards and just run through them. Run through your weaknesses. You don't have to go through the entire content because it's a lot of information. Just run through the information that you get from the CRAM course. Give yourself about a week of just going through the flashcards and you're gonna feel so much better, right? So much better. So at this point, you've completed your 75 hours at Real Estate Express. You have gone to Prep Agent and you've done your study materials there. If you're really, really serious, you went and found an in-person cram course. Now you have your flashcards. You've done everything you were supposed to do. Now you're ready to take your state exam. 
And I've seen some people try to cram the day of, and even while they're minutes away of taking the state exam, I can see them having like flashcards and their phones and they have their books in their car waiting. Don't do that. If you prepare well enough, give yourself a break about 48 hours before you go into the exam. Otherwise, you're gonna overload yourself and you're gonna confuse yourself when you take the exam. Study, prepare, and then just relax, let it go. After you pass the test, you're gonna take the printout that they give you, you're gonna to go to the local police station, you're gonna get your background check, and then you're going to submit that to your state's local commission office. And then at that point, you're going to be a licensed agent. Now here's what you're gonna do at this point. Here's the second part where I see a lot of people get tripped up. Once you pass your exam, you're gonna to have to be affiliated with a broker. This is gonna be the opportunity where you go ahead and you interview brokers to affiliate yourself with. This is the area where I think a lot of people get mixed up. There are some brokers that are very big. Some of them are nationwide. They offer a lot of support. They offer a lot of training. However, on the flip side is they may require a good portion of your commission. Some of them are 50-50, some of them are 60-40. Depending on where you go, there's usually a trade-off. So a lot of the big brokers, they'll give you a lot of the support and the attention that you need, but they're also going to expect to take more out of your commission. On the flip side is there are some smaller brokers where they may not give you so much attention. They may not give you so much training. However, what they'll do is if you close on a property, instead of them taking 40%, 30%, 50%, they may say, hey, just only pay me 500 bucks flat fee. You keep the rest. You gotta figure out what's best for you. What I would recommend for most people, the first year, try to go with a big broker, try to get as much training as possible. Try to join a team if possible. Again, you may not like the commission splits. However, in that first year, you're gonna get so much training, you're gonna know how to close deals, you're gonna know how to read contracts, you're gonna ask all the silly questions, you're gonna get all that out, and then after the first year, if you choose to, you can then hang your license with another broker who has more competitive commission splits. For me, I think this is the most efficient way to get your foot in the door, get all the kinks out, and take your first steps as a real estate agent. And then lastly, there's something called CE, which is continuing education. So once you've done all of this, you got your license in hand, you have to complete 36 hours in order to let the commission know that you are staying on top of your game, you're staying on top of the ever-changing laws that are going on in your state. Always make sure to stay on top of your continuing education because if you don't, you're gonna have to pay fees and then ultimately they can deactivate your license. So if you're really serious about this, you could take all of this and knock it out probably within one to maybe two months. It may take you about two to four weeks to take care of your pre-licensed class. It may take you another two to three weeks in order to prep and take your cram and then take your exam. And then after that, you are a licensed agent. So that's it, that's all I got for you. Let me know any questions or thoughts that you have down below, I'll make sure to answer that. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe and I'm gonna check you out in the next video. Peace. Thank you.